Tip and trick number one, we'll be learning how to play around Droll and Lockbird. Now, considering Drytron might be one of the best decks of the format, Droll is still going to be a very popular hand trap. And since Sky Striker decks play cards like Upstart Goblin and Metal Falls Fusion, those cards can very easily get you drolled and we absolutely do not want that. If you are worried about Droll, there is a way to play around it if you have a multi-roll live. So, let's imagine a hand where we have multi-roll, reinforcement of the army, and then we need any quick play spell, so we'll use Whittle Anchor, and then we need any blank card. For simplicity, we'll use Afterburners. You're going to activate multi-roll, set the Afterburners, use the multi-roll effect to send the Afterburners to the graveyard, and now your opponent is unable to respond to any of your spell card activations. However, you're still vulnerable to Droll here because at this point, they'd be using it on the resolution and not in response to your spell card. Now, you're going to activate Reinforcement of the Army to search out a Sky Striker Ace Ray or a Rose if you really want to. And then on resolution, since you are turn player, you have priority to activate any quick effects before your opponent. So therefore, you're going to use the Widow Anchor on one of your opponent's monsters. And then at that point, since a spell card was activated, your opponent is no longer able to respond on that chain. Tip and trick number two is something you absolutely have to know when playing the mirror match. And it is the Widow Anchor interaction. If you don't, you're going to probably cost yourself a lot of games. If your opponent has three or more spells in their graveyard and they decide to activate Widow Anchor targeting your Sky Striker Ace Link monster, you can actually ensure that they are not able to take control of it. In order for Widow Anchor to take control of a monster, it has to negate the monster's effect. What that means is you are able to chain link to activate your own Widow Anchor targeting your own link monster in order to negate its effects. Since chains resolve backwards, that means your opponent will not be able to negate an already negated monster, which also means that Widow Anchor will not be able to take the monster. Bonus tip, Infinite Impermanence is another card that has to negate the monster's effect in order to negate a spell trap in its own column, so play around with that as you will. Tip and trick number three, I'm going to teach you how to resolve the full effect of jamming waves while only having two spells in your graveyard. So if you have two spells in your graveyard and you want to resolve the second part of jamming waves effect, don't worry, I got you. You can actually target your own set spell card with jamming waves to get the second part of the effect. With jamming waves, the second part of the effect to destroy a monster on the field only checks your graveyard for three spells after the first part of the effect has resolved and in that instance you would now have three spells in your graveyard also bonus points if you pop your own set area zero to also get access to a sky striker ace monster from your deck moving on to tip and trick number four i'm going to teach you how to get a double dd crow play at the end of your turn and considering how the graveyard has been a key component for many decks as of late, I think this may become a very useful play for the upcoming and future formats. As with the first trick, having multi-roll on the field is an important part of the play. In the end phase, when you activate Shizuku's effect to search for a Sky Striker spell from your deck, you're going to search out a copy of Sky Striker Mecha Shark Cannon. Since it's a quick effect, you can still activate it in the end phase to banish the card, and then you'll have activated a Sky Striker spell to set with multi roll. You proceed to resolve multi roll, setting the Shark Cannon, and now, depending on what you're playing against, you can either Shark Cannon at the beginning of your opponent's turn or wait to do so during a crucial part of their play. Tip and trick number five. We're now nearing the end of the video as this is the final tip and trick I'm going to show you. And with that, I'm going to show you guys how to dodge Effect Veiler. Now, before I do that, if you've enjoyed the video so far or found it useful, please support me by smashing that like button and hitting subscribe. I love making both fun and educational content, so you'll get plenty of stuff like this. Now, moving along to the tip and trick. With Effect Veiler seeing a resurgence in the metagame, this is going to be very important to know. Your opponent will usually save their Effect Veiler for the Kagari, 
but there is a way around that and no it's not ego booster now remember effect veiler is main phase only if your opponent has a monster on the field with 1500 more attack points you're able to go into sky striker ace hayate enter the battle phase and crash your hayate into their monster that way you still get the effect of hayate to send you get back a ray from the graveyard and now you can use ray's quick effect in the battle phase go into kagari and add the card that you sent off the hayate to your hand Essentially, since you did everything in the battle phase, your opponent has no window to use the effect failure in their hand. That'll conclude my video on all the tips and tricks you need to know in order to become a better Sky Striker player. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Bear, signing off. Peace, guys.